Hello. In this installment of GDB Watchpoint, we're going to play around with kind of a, if you like, a pauper's reversible debug. So as you probably know, reversible debugging is something that's uh, pretty close to my heart. And really that's, you know, that's because well, debugging is, is this process of thinking what happened, figuring out how did I get here. And um, uh, obviously the recommended way to do that is to buy lots and lots of undo products um, to, to help you do it. But if for some reason you are unfortunate enough not to be in a position uh, to do that and you can't even use something like RR or even the in inbuilt GDB reversible debugging, how can you kind of approximate that? Well, I'm going to show you a couple of little tricks here. So here is, um, if you've seen um, some of my demos before, you may well... Uh, be familiar with this uh, this little program here, which basically um, uh, 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 calculates some some square roots, installs them in a cache, and looks them up later, and has a bug. Now I've edited my my standard demo here. I I use a, a, a random seeded off the time so that it's non-deterministic. Now I've edited this to make it deterministic. So the following really only works if your program it fails in in the same way each time. But if you can get a deterministic reproducer for a failure, this is quite a good way of of digging in to kind of see what how how did I get to where I did, got to. And really, it's a it's actually re-implementing by hand what what things like Live Recorder, uh, Undo DB, and uh, and RR will will sort of automate for you. Uh, so here, that's my little program, as I said. So I'm going to compile it in a normal way. Um, school square root dot c and I need to do the, the math library because we do some square root stuff as well and so as I say I've made this deterministic so when I run it uh, it fails you can see it fails on the, after 2011 iterations if I do it again always the same so let's load it into gdb um, let's run the program uh, boom it's failed a um, bit of uh, uh, a bit of TUI mode and I'm going to uh, come up the call stack Okay, so I can see here we are, we're calling this function here, cache calculate. I'm calling it with a number of 255 and it's returned this value, it's returned zero. Now it's supposed to return the square root, zero is not the square root of 255. So I need to figure out why did uh, cache calculate do uh, what, it, what it did. Well, I don't know, that information's gone, right? What I'm going to do is put a breakpoint line 76 here, which is where I'm, the bit I'm interested in. I want to know why. What, what does cache calculate actually do? Um, and I'm going to use the the, um, the command ignore, which is to apply to a breakpoint will ignore the first n times that we hit it. So that's breakpoint one. So I go ignore one. I'm going to like ignore it the first one, two, three, one, two, three, first hundred million times that we hit it. I'm going to run the program now. So what? Of course, this is going to have the effect that it's never going to stop. I, my program doesn't iterate that many times. Okay. It's failed, um, so let's come up the call stack again, see where we are. Um, right, all looks the same. So if I go info break, I can now see that uh, that breakpoint hit 2012 times. So now I'm going to set it to a new ignore value, ignore one 2011 times. So the 2012th time round, it will stop at that line 76. So let's rerun the program, start again. Okay. Control L. Right, so here I am. Um, let me just check everything is, is as I think it's going to be. So number should be 255. Yes, it is. So this looks good. So let's step into the function. Let's step forwards. Um, and I'm going to go... Now it's going to go around that loop a whole bunch of times, which is a bit boring. So let's put a breakpoint on the two places that we escape from that. You might hope you could use the until command here, but it doesn't quite do what you want it to. Um, so continue, okay, it's returning from here, print i, i is 90, so we're returning the 90th entry in the cache, and if I print cache 90, we can see, sure enough, it's that's the bad data right there. Question, of course, though, is how did that come to be? How did, uh, 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 what, why, that data structure contains bad data, the question is why, right? Um, well, I can... Add, now what I'd normally want to do is add a reverse watch point here, but I don't have reversible debugging available, so I'm just going to add a regular one. Uh, if cache ninety dot number equals two five five. Okay, now I've got a whole bunch of other um, breakpoints I want to get rid of actually, so I'm going to disable all of my breakpoints and re-enable number five. Little trick. Um, uh, re-enable number four. Sorry, which was the watch point I just added and rerun from the beginning. 
again requires my program to be completely deterministic but if it is all good so uh there we go so just go to the next line so print cache 90 and we can see sure enough this is the point where we're, we're writing garbage into the cache so writing operand adjacent minus one and so square root adjacent is garbage because you can't take the square root of minus one well why was that again if i was using reversible debugging i could just back up and see what was going on i have to use a bit of code inspection now it's probably the easiest way to do it from here so how did operand adjacent get to be minus one well let's see well it starts off as operand minus one at the top of this loop here so print uh, operand and uh, operand is zero so here's the bug um, I, I've called my function with an operand of zero it returned the right thing it returned zero it's trying to be clever it's trying to store one uh, uh, entry either side in the cache on the basis of some kind of locality of reference and unfortunately it wasn't so clever because it was trying to store the square root of minus one um, now of course that as I say only works if the program is completely deterministic but if it is or if you can at least sort of segment it down to the portion that's deterministic that could be quite a powerful uh, little trick using the uh, ignore uh, command let's just show you because you know I can't resist this stuff let's just show you what that would look like with the full uh, awesomeness of, of reverse debugging so um, UDB. if you've seen this we did this demo before then you can stop watching the video at this point if you haven't you might like to see an even better way to do what we just did so I run the program okay it's failed now rather than up I'm going to do a reverse finish and we'll go back to our code and um, we can see square root cache is this bad value numbers 255 so I'm going to go reverse next a few times to get back to here and I'm going to reverse step into cache calculate and print I now it's still this completely deterministic version so I know I is going to be 90 that's fine so cache 90 so now I'm going to go watch cache 90 dot number and then reverse continue to that point um, and so we can debug from there so you can see how we've kind of emulated some of the some of what's going on with reverse debugging and in fact when I've just did this demo here when I do reverse next or when I do reverse continue it's actually running it forward from a from a snapshot so it's doing what we did by hand now of course if I put this program back to how it was before I just edited it and take out this srand of course none of that um, ignore breakpoint stuff is going to work for me because um, everything just ends up uh, completely in a different uh, in a different place um, but if you're deterministic you get the point thank you for listening see you again soon